Deck Pass Live presented by Xfinity is here at Bloomington, Indiana, the site of the fourth stop of the Tier Pro Swim Series. And we're at the Hobie, the Hobie Billingsley Doc Councilman Aquatic Center. Those two guys have done so much for the sport. Hobie Billingsley, the legendary diving coach, and Doc Councilman, the legendary swim coach. And we've talked throughout the series about how legendary that Doc Councilman has been, all the innovations he's brought to the sport. It's just been so great to, to know that this one person did so much for the sport. It truly was very interesting. I, I literally had no idea how much he's really contributed. I've always heard his name, um, knew of his, like, his legendary-ness, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but what it all entailed, it was kind of mind-blowing. Yeah, I'm Jeff Cummings with Olympic gold medalist, Caitlin Sandino, and we, you know, we've been swimming for a long time, and we, <laughs> we take a lot of things that Doc Councilman did for granted, pace clocks, interval training, underwater, filming just all those things that we're just like somebody had to think of them but you know <laughs> just being here it was doc and 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 i am just truly amazed by that and you know this facility is is named in one of his honor mm -hmm. and you know this pool has is really has produced some fast times here right. you know the indiana university swimmers they train here every day and i can't imagine what it must feel like to walk in the pool and see those olympic medalists some who are currently training here now right. but to see people like jim montgomery mark spitz mm -hmm. Gary Hall Sr. See those pictures on the on the the wall, and to see the number of like Olympians that they have every year, the number of All Americans, the number of NCAA titles. I mean, just look at that. You walk in there, and and it's just absolutely amazing to see what it is like to go in there um, every day. And um, one of those people who is training with us, uh, who is who trains here at IU, is joining us today. Zane Grothy. Zane, it is great to have you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So it's been um, a really, really good meet for you, um, especially that 400 freestyle, 348 and 4 free. We're going to show this clip here and kind of talk us through, um, you know, obviously there you are with your game face arm. We're going to show this last 50 real quick. Uh, at any point, did you know that there was a 348 coming? I, I did not know. You know, I, I tried a little different strategy at this meet. I told my coach that I didn't prepare to do anything special. Oh, wow. You know, I trained really hard coming right in, so I went 100% effort in prelims to practice that kind of feeling and mentality for world championships right. when I competed at the end of the season. So I, I wasn't even sure if I was going to go any faster at finals. So to be able to throw down almost my lifetime best for unrested, I was pleasantly surprised when you have that much of a lead in a 400 does that give you even more motivation or do you like it when it's a little bit closer what's your ideal race situation I you know I really like being pretty far ahead <laughs> yes. but in, in a situation like that you know knowing kind of looking back on each flip turn thinking like I, I'm doing good you know good. Keep, keep, the, keep the gas down and, and hold on to it um, and what is it like to have this home pool advantage where you know you know the lines you know the the, the atmosphere how did that help you it's it's weird to have it because it doesn't it doesn't feel quite so much you know it's nice to have the locker room and right. to be living close and all the restaurants and everything too but you know it's it's funny that my fastest tuner free now in season and my two of my fastest 400 freestyles in season have happened right here in this pool over the last few years so it, there's there's definitely something to it and uh, you this is coming off a, a big change for you, I guess, going to Open Water National, something I, you know, a lot of us were surprised to see you there. Was this a, <laughs> a, a quick decision to say, hey, I want to go down to Florida and do this, or was this Probably kind of in the works for a while? Uh, it was a little bit in the works. You know, I did the 10K by surprise at Pampax last year, right. and I did as I usually do. I, I kind of fall off at the end and fall apart. So I told my, I told my coach, I said, hey, I want to do this for me one time. You know, can, can I go to Open Water Nationals and do a, do a good 10K and be competitive at the end? The 10K didn't really work out, but, you know, fortunately I turned around two days later and had a good race on the 5K. Yeah, it was a fantastic race. I really like what you had to say about the 10K because I think it's so important uh, for our younger swimmers to hear. I mean, it didn't go as planned. You made a decision to kind of, you dropped out of the race, correct? I did. Um, and, and mentally, what did that do for you getting ready for the 5K and how did you bounce, bounce back? I, it, it was all kind of premeditated. Okay. I had two goals going in, have a good 10K, okay. and then good or bad, no matter how tired I am, be prepared to turn around two days later and race another hard race. Great. So once that 10K was over, I said, you know, like mentally I'm very defeated, 
maybe not physically, but I'm going to turn around, do everything I need to prepare correctly mm -hmm. and, and race again. Did you have to change your training in the pool getting ready for this race or did you just kind of stick to the plan that you had already been doing? Um, fortunately, I already trained at a pretty high volume, but I did do a little you bit did. of change, uh, change in the training. Yeah, oh, wow. the lifting came down a little bit. Okay. The intensity in the water came down a little bit and almost every set every day was long aerobic. What's the hardest part for you transitioning to the open water that you're not quite used to yet? Um, probably the aggressiveness. The contact. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a very <laughs> passive person. You know, if someone bumps me, I'll, I'm, I'm getting out of their way. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, but, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but I, I got to, you know, you got to yeah. take it by the, by the horns and really get aggressive out there. Yeah, absolutely. There's no fooling around there because, you know, it's a very, it is, I mean, they, they kind of, it's like water polo. I mean, they try to do it on the sly without getting caught underwater, a lot of stuff that goes on. But, you know, it, it's so funny because um, a lot of the open water swimmers, they're the nicest people out of the pool <laughs> and they get in the water and it really is, you know, they've got to, they, they know that in order to do well, they've got to kind of jostle them out there. Was that kind of your experience? I mean, I, I know you probably know a lot of these people like Jordan, especially and, yeah. uh, and get in the water with them out in the ocean yeah. and they're totally different people. Yeah, so we're all <laughs> friends before and after, but when you're in the water, you, you kind of just don't take it personally. You know, you try and swim your best line. If someone's in the way, you try and get where you need to be going without, you know, hurting them in their position. But you just, you really just kind of focus on doing your thing. And you talked about that 5K and you did very well. Fourth place, you were the top American. Uh, what really stood out, I think, for a lot of people is you qualified for world championships in the 5K, but you gave up your spot to your teammate, Michael Brenniger, who was the third American. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you make that decision? I had to make the decision whether I was going to swim it or not almost right after the race. Wow. Um, I went over to my coach. I pulled up the the order of events. I, it was it was actually going to be the first open water race about eight days before the first pool race, which okay. would have been my 400 freestyle. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, eight days is a while if I need to recover. And, you know, he, we talked over the different training that I would need as not to mention if I were to try and taper, that's I'm swimming the first day in the pool and the last day in the pool, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, with that mile. So it was it was going to be really difficult to try and pull it off. And my coach said, it's up to you, but I would advise against it. And I said, you're right, you know, I've got three pool races, which yeah. are very important to me. So, yeah. really? Well, it's not just three pool races, it's prelim final. So you got <laughs> yeah. six races and they're not short ones. <laughs> Absolutely. So I already had my hands full and, and knowing that if I were to pull out uh, a guy I've been training with for a full year, Michael Brenniger would be moving into the spot. It really was, cool. it, it, it worked out. Made the decision a little bit easier, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this something open water you think you might uh, start venturing to more full time next quadrennium? 2024? Uh, you know, I wouldn't say I'd be doing it more often. If Open Water Nationals falls on a good weekend d during the training cycle, mm -hmm. um, I, I might jump into it every year. Okay, well, that's really good. Um, so we talked about world championships. Uh, you got the 400, the 800, and the mile. Uh, I know they're all important to you, but is there one of those races that you're saying, <laughs> I really am hungry to race that one more than the others? Uh, yeah, I'd probably say the 800. Last mm -hmm. year I finished number two in the world. Mm -hmm. It's now an Olympic event. Mm -hmm. And even though I dropped seven seconds, I was only one tenth of a second off that American record. So I'm hungry for that. And I think yeah. that might be my best shot to uh, definitely win a medal. What motivates you, Zane? Um, knowing that I still have more to give, you know, no, knowing that every year I, I can go another best time and I can be better than I was. I love seeing the support that you rock on your wrist. You mind sharing with our folks watching what that means to you? Yeah, yeah. So the orange one says Auburn Pride, okay. you know, and um, I may have had a rough college experience through the swimming world, but I definitely learned a lot and I'm very proud of the program and, and the school mm -hmm. that we're, where it came from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other three um, kind of have a, a personal significance to me. Mm -hmm. um, in 2008, my sister was diagnosed with thyroid cancer mm -hmm. and she, she went through treatment and, and got better and everything, but never got the opportunity to swim in college. Oh. Um, so we all started wearing Live Strong bands That's and uh, she got a good scholarship from that. Amazing. And uh, I've always been wearing a band. Um, so these other three, one's, one's for Nigu. <laughs> <laughs> Never ever give up. Very yeah. personal statement of mine. Yes, and uh, so I was able perfect. to represent uh, San Dino squad last year and, and compete for, for Nigu. You like tore it up for our team, let's be honest. Absolutely. MVP, it's, points, points, points. It's a great, <laughs> great reason to be racing, not just for yourself. Right. But uh, so I've got that one on still. Love it. Um, I've got the Love Your Melon one, oh, yeah. which is very similar. They, yeah. they sell beanies and, and apparel for. Uh, families who have kids with cancer and everything. It's incredible. And the pink, the pink one is faded, but I, I believe it said positivity is the best medicine. And love it supports it. Nikki Nolte, who, uh, yes. who's, yes. going, who's going through her battle with cancer. I love that. Shout at, out to uh, Nikki. Penn State. Yeah, definitely. That is really I love important. That. 
Yeah. You're such a likable guy. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it's actually kind of come full circle again. One of your teammates, Nathan Adrian, is uh, going through that battle. Have you been able to speak to him uh, since you've been here about I kind haven't. of your personal experience of how you know you've been able to support your own sister? Yeah, you know, when my sister went through the battle, she she kept it very personal. She mm -hmm. kept it to herself, and she shared what she wanted to. Right. You know, so if if Nathan ever needs someone to talk to, he knows most of these national team athletes are are here for him. Definitely. I've been impressed with you in the pool, but Zane, you're picking up your cooking skills. I've been I'm working kind of on it. I'm <laughs> impressed. Uh, what's you. your like? What's your specialty right now? Um, definitely not chopping or cutting. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, we don't want you losing a finger. <laughs> you know, anything that's going in the oven, you got or that? maybe on a pan, I've gotten a lot better at. It. <laughs> okay. Do you have a favorite? Um, I've figured out a really great way to cook green beans. Ooh. A little bit of oil, a little bit of salt and pepper in a pan. It's my favorite way, and it's delicious. I could do that every night. And you seem like a pretty healthy eater as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Got to feed the machine, right? Yep. <laughs> That's really cool. And uh, so Cody gave us some recommendations yeah, on the first night about restaurants. And like, you like to cook at home, but I'm sure you like to go out to eat here in Bloomington. Where's your favorite place to go? Well, I'd say my favorite meal of the day is breakfast. Okay. Yeah. So there's a place here called Village Deli. Okay. Big portions and yeah. a big menu. So. Before we hit on the plate, yeah. perfect. <laughs> Always my favorite. A summer's I, favorite meal, right after yeah. morning workout, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I bet you they love you there. I bet you they're like, oh, Zane's here. We got to get the kitchen working. You, you can't go in there without seeing another group of swimmers. So. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure that's going to be great. Well, we're all, I think a lot of swimmers are going to probably be going there yeah, tomorrow we'll before they are yeah. um, heading back home. Zane, it's great to see you. Congratulations again. I know you got the 800 tonight. Good That's going to be fun to watch. And I know it's going to be in your mind about getting ready for Worlds. And uh, we're going to be looking forward to seeing how you do over in Guangzhou. Thank you Always very much. For you. Thank, Thank you. you, Zane. All right. So, and one of the things we were talking about is Zane gives a lot of support to uh, people suffering with cancer and the NIGU Foundation Never Ever Give. But one thing we like to give a, um, a lot of support to is the USA Swimming Foundation. Yes. And they got a great campaign going on right now. It's called Goggles On. And we just love to wear our goggles even when we're not in the pool. And, you know, it's not easy with our microphones on. How do I look? These like kind of hurt my eyeballs. These yeah. are hurting my eyeballs. The kids. I like, yeah. And I got the mirrored one, so it looks really dark in here. Yeah. So Look at we, that. I love it. <laughs> I love it. We are having so much fun. So with we that. have a challenge for you. The campaign is called hashtag goggles on. Take a picture with yourself in your favorite goggles. Post it. Hashtag goggles on. This is all about promoting water safety. Obviously, very near and dear to the Swimming Foundation's heart. Something that um, as national team members are supporting, and all of us in the swimming community. You can check that out on USA Swimming Foundation. Um, back slash goggles on. Please do that. Mm -hmm. All right, so <laughs> we just talked about how the USA Swimming Foundation is really trying to get more people in the water. One of their big ambassadors <laughs> is Simone Manuel, so take a look to see how she's helping that. Hey, Mom and Dad. There's a way to let your kids have fun. And learn a skill that could save their life. Swim lessons, woo! Sadly, drowning takes too many young lives but it's preventable, and studies show that lessons reduce that risk by 88%. So go to usaswimmingfoundation.org and enroll your child today. I learned how to swim. The USA Swimming Foundation, saving lives and building champions. All right, we're back here at Deck Pass Live, presented by Xfinity. Another person who does a lot of work with USA Swimming Foundation is Nathan Adrian, yes. who, as we have seen, um, is a real big positive figure here. Everybody just loves ambassador. seeing him. Even before he was diagnosed with cancer, everybody just loves seeing him on deck. And I think he's really felt the positive vibes. Mm -hmm. I got to speak to him um, earlier today and you know, he just, big smile on his face eternally. Yes. I mean, he's, he's glad that, you know, he's pretty much right now cancer free right. and back in the water. And he just, he said, it just feels good to be back. And I love what he said. Did you see something like, you know, it wasn't a win, but it was better than watching it from the couch. Yes. And it's like, that is an awesome um, perspective. Yeah. You know, I definitely mean, keeping a big picture. Yeah. And, and we're going to take a He's look still, at this 50 yes, free today. So he, uh, he was in there with a pretty good heat. He yeah. had um, Luis Martinez on his right and Blake Peroni on his left. So it was not going to be a slouch of a heat. And um, I think Nathan knew it, but he knew what he had to do just to get a lane in the finals. Um, they had to kind of stand him up a little bit. I <laughs> hope that wasn't going to take some of the uh, tension off the heat, but they all did pretty well here. So you see Nathan, you saw Nathan there. And uh, he's always got a great start, Caitlin. 
Yeah, and we talked about that. Um, that was a little bit of his concern coming into the beginning of the race. He wasn't quite sure how his start would be because he is feeling um, a little, um, what, what did he say? A little, just um, a little off. Yeah, just he's favoring one side more than the other, yeah. and his vertical jump is a little bit less um, explosive right now. But I think he looked really good. I mean, I'm not a sprint specialist, but Jeff, I think this is pretty impressive swim, especially for a morning swim as well. Yeah, and very good for a morning swim. And I think he had the best start of the field, and, mm. and I think he might have just even backed off a little bit the last 10 meters and said, you know, I made finals. I made finals. That's okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he went 22-6. So he's a uh, 22. Um, I believe it was 22-6, and um, I think that's that she should be very happy with that. And 22-9-6, and Blake Perlman 22-8. So it's going to be a really good final tonight. I cannot wait to see what it's going to be like because um, 50 freestyle, especially when it's in season, when you're not at 100 percent, you're never sure how it's going to go. And and when you ha when you make those mistakes in season, Everything. they affect you a little bit more than when you're fully tapered. Right, definitely. And the 50 free is always such a crowd favorite and Nathan being such a crowd favorite. So you can expect a lot of noise, a lot of electricity, a lot of support getting ready for this race yep. tonight. And it's going to be the last A final here in Bloomington. Everybody's going to want to be excited to see how this, this meet ends. So let's show you the, the race schedule for tonight to show you what we're going to be expecting. We're actually going to end with Nathan, but we're going to begin with probably the best uh, female Olympian we've got going right we now, do. Katie Ledecky in the 800 freestyle. And we had Zane Grothy, who will be in the men's 800 free. Um, Reagan Smith coming off that explosive 200 back last night. She's going to be leading the field in the women's 100 back. We got Cody Miller and Lily King in the 200 breast hometown favorites, along with Annie Laser. 100 flies are going to be very, very fun. The 200 IM, I just love, love mixing race. the strokes up and anybody's race there. And as I said, we're going to end with a 50 freestyle Simone Manuel, the top seed there in the women's event. And then we're going to see who could take the top spot in the men's race. It's going to be a great way to end up the meet here. And you definitely want to watch us after all that, even after the C&D finals. Caitlin and I will be back for Deck Pass Live, and we're going to just kind of wrap everything up. and. I think we're going to have a really special guest, and you yeah. definitely don't want to miss it. We're yes. going to kind of keep this a surprise, <laughs> so you don't want to miss it. Come back here at USASwimming.org once all the races is over, are over, and we can't wait to see you guys there. We can't wait to have our special guest here, so thanks, everybody, again, for joining us. Again, thanks, Zane, for joining us today, and we'll see you back here tonight.